Grace and peace to you on this day. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I like to read. I like to read a variety of different things. I like to read books. I like to read magazines. I like to read the news. I like to read things online. But I have a confession to make to you about the way I read. I always like to flip to the end to see how long I'm in for, what I've signed up for in this. Not to read the ending, I want to keep that a little bit open-ended, but I want to know if this is a 270-page book and I'm on page 10, how long I have to go. Or if I'm looking at a magazine, how many page turns I need. Or if I'm looking at something online, how far down I need to scroll. There's a certain value in it, I find knowing what you're in for, finding the after prior to the before. Uh, I've especially learned how well this works uh, as I've been reading uh, with our daughter Mia. We've been reading Harry Potter and we're, uh, we just made it through the end of the second book. And on many occasions she got a little nervous when it gets into kind of a, a scary part. And I could tell her, hey, there's still a hundred pages left. It's going to work out. <laughs> Or I could tell her, we're only on book two. Do you really think Harry's going to die now? <laughs> Knowing the after prior to the before is kind of helpful. Gives you a vision of something different than you counted on before. Or that you count on in your regular experience. Not necessarily having the end totally painted for you, but at least knowing where you're going, where the story is going to end up. These pair of readings today do that for us. They let us in on a little something about who Jesus is. We get the after prior to the before. It's much like this day we call Christ the King. It's the last Sunday of the year in the church and it's also prior to beginning of Advent when we soon, at least in our house, we're going to bring the Christmas decorations up uh, today, getting ready for the one who is to come and we catch a different vision of that now prior to hearing that story. The after prior to the before. Uh, this is not a test and I'm not going to call on you, but if you've ever uh, opened your Bible, it starts in Genesis 1, in the beginning. In the beginning God. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's Genesis 1.1. And the Bible ends in Revelation. Chapter 22, 20 and 21. Jesus is speaking. I am coming soon. And the author, who we think is John, responds, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Christ be with all the saints. Amen. We find ourselves in the middle pages somewhere. That's where our lives rest. But not just between the beginning and the end, between the after and the before. To know that we are part of the saints praying, come Lord Jesus, and we know in the beginning, God. And we find ourselves in the midst of that story someplace, whatever page we're on. If you continue to page through your Bible, you kind of notice uh, it's a little out of sequence. You've got uh, these stories of the histories of the people, followed by uh, these wisdom books like the Psalms that were written during the time of those histories and then you get uh, the prophets who usually remind people to love the least of these and turn back to God during those histories. If you just read it from beginning to end it feels a little bit out of order. New Testament isn't much better. You have four stories in a row of Jesus. The beginning of his ministry, his life and death and resurrection. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And then you have the Acts of the Apostles, those first followers of him who did testify to the truth in many and various ways. And then after that, you have their correspondence with communities they help to set up and establish and relate to. And then you get to this book, Revelation. It's a weird book. It's got lots of powerful images in it. There's a lot of destruction and judgment and the people are under a lot of trials and it seems that most people like to tend to stay there with it. But there's a different vision that happens in it. If you were to read the few words prior to what uh, Marilyn read today where she starts grace and peace, the first half of that verse we omitted said, to the seven churches that are in Asia. 
It's a letter. It's a letter to contemporaries. It's a letter to us. And in it is a powerful vision. A vision not just of destruction and the world in which we live that seems to go haywire, but of the heavenly throne where God is, where Christ is King, eternal, where the words are, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the after and the before. And you start to see as you look at that throne and all the leaders and all the saints, all of us are gathered to worship God in the bright light of that moment, you get to see this scene where Jesus is on trial. And we see it for what it is. It's kind of a farce, really. You have the eternal king of the universe, the eternal king, Alpha and Omega, after and before, being tried by a Roman official. Now at uh, first glance, it looks pretty dire. You've got this invincible empire, at least Rome was seen that way, the eternal city. And you've got this magistrate with ultimate power. But you start to see it's really not much power, really, to have a king of the universe on trial by this temporal entity that as we know, fades in the pages of history. Rome falls. Pilate, other than this scene, is mostly forgotten. And we get to look at this in an entirely different way. The after and the before. We live our lives out of sequence. Because we see things from the resurrection moving forward, rather than just the baby to the end. And all the things that happened in between, including in our own lives, get, get moved around. We get a different picture, a different vision of what that looks like, and it comes right over here. We have this font. It doesn't look like much. It's just a nice stone pillar. It's decorated nice. It's full of ordinary water. But it brings us to a different place. It not only brings us into the kingdom or to see the king, we're actually made into the kingdom. You and me, living stones, and all that that could possibly mean in a world that looks like it's in such turmoil all the time. We're reminded that the kingdom of God and Jesus' rule in it is not a matter of geography. I mean, currently as we speak, the grand cathedrals of Europe sit mostly empty, right? We worry about that happening to us. And yet in other places in the world, places like Africa and Asia and South America, the church is booming. Sure, we have our holy sites and beautiful monuments, but that's not the church. That's not the kingdom of God. It's you and me built into living stones, into the kingdom, in this world. The kingdom of God is not just the Holy Land. People have gotten that wrong for ages. Years ago, decades ago, centuries ago, eons ago, the kingdom of God is not trying to exterminate your enemy even a few days ago. The kingdom of God doesn't look like throwing a bomb up hoping it hits someone. The kingdom of God doesn't look like using a laser-guided missile to retaliate. The kingdom of God looks like a helpless baby being brought by his parents being surrounded by godparents and family members and a congregation of people that are here to be living stones, brought into the kingdom of God, made saints, even though we don't deserve it, especially because we don't. And when we see this trial, we see it for, for what it is. We're not his followers trying to save him. Jesus even says that. It's Jesus, the King who rules eternal, saving us. The cross becomes not just an image of Rome's power and brutality. It becomes his coronation, where he sits not just on the judgment seat, but with his arms spread open for the world to come. 
We see the resurrection not just as a justification for his suffering and death. Oh, this is why he did it. Rather, we see it as a justification of ourselves. People who don't deserve to be there, but are made the saints to stand in his grace, to live the after and the before, in the now. And what we are called to, what Collins called to, is to find our place in the story, to know the end, to know the last page, but to know the story is not completely written yet, to know the before, in the beginning God, to know that our story matters in the here and now, in the way we relate to this world that Jesus spreads his arms to save. The question that we are left with today is what page are we on? What page are you on? Are you on the anxiety page, worried about the future? Are you on the suffering page in your darkest pain? Are you on the comfort page, either giving it or receiving it? Are you on the joyful page, surrounding your loved ones on this great day of celebration? Are you on a different page? Are you like Pilate asking what is truth as those who have gathered around you as the kingdom of God testify to that truth? That is the gift of this day, to find ourselves in the story, to know that Christ who was and who is and who will be joins us on every page that comes and to know wherever you come on this day that the story continues and it begins a new chapter starting now. Amen. <laughs>